teams looking for an opportunity to kind of get off the uh, losing streak of train. Uh, Hampton comes into the game having a uh, one and three record, having lost their last three games, while Lane has come in and hadn't won a game yet. But they've been very competitive in three of the four games. So I think they're looking forward to a uh, an opportunity to upset the Pirates here as they look like a very good matchup when you look at them on paper. Yeah, well, so let's start with the Dragons, led by head coach Derek Burroughs, a team he's had been at the helm of for the last eight years at 26 and 48 overall. When you look at these uh, this matchup, where do you think Lane will be able to take advantage with the matchup here with the Pirates? I think in the passing game, they have an opportunity for some success here. Hampton's given up about 199 yards per game throughout through the air, um, and Lane has some receivers um, that are making some really big plays out there. Uh, one of their receivers, uh, his name is uh, Hill. He's been a Ahmad Hill. He's been able to make some plays, some big plays, a big 74-yard game, and he's averaging over. I'm sorry, Ahmad Isaac. He's averaging over 23 yards per catch. Um, so I'm thinking they're going to look to exploit him um, in the passing game against this Hampton University secondary. And on the flip side, where do you think the Pirates can be able to take advantage of the Dragons? Um, I think Hampton's going to look to wear him down with that run game, um, get Delman Williams uh, early. He's made some made some mistakes early on in the past few games, but I think they're going to look to get him started with some safe throws, getting the ball out to Ronald Isaac um, and uh, Ronald Bell and let him make some plays on the outside and uh, crease this uh, Dragons defense. You mentioned the quarterback position for the Pirates. Last week, the Pirates started a new quarterback in Bruce Dixon, the junior, transferred to Hampton from Dartmouth. So we'll see if Coach Robert Prunty here in his first campaign with Hampton will stick with Dixon or go back to Williams. Another quarterback that's seen some action this year was Brendan Green. He was actually the week one starter for the Pirates before Coach Prunty went to Williams, who was the starter a year ago. So some question marks here at quarterback for Hampton. We'll keep our eyes to see who's uh, lining up at quarterback for the Pirates. But let's take a look at this matchup here. First time meeting between Hampton and Lane uh, against the uh, SIAC. Hampton overall is 32, 21, and three. Those three ties all coming against Morehouse, ironically. But nonetheless, this is a game where you look at it on paper. You would say Hampton, the D1 team, been D1, 22 years, former members of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, uh, taking on a SIAC team representing Division Two of the NCAA. So just with the depth and additional scholarships, you would think Hampton would win the battle of attrition here against Lane. Well, that's the thing you don't want to do. You don't want to walk into a game like this and underestimate your opponent. Uh, the Dragons are going to come in here with something to prove. So you want to make sure that if you're the team that's supposed to win, you come out from the onset of the start of the game and you set the tone early. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens here at the kickoff and what Hampton elects to do. But I see this being a game where if Hampton allows them to stay in this game, it could get interesting late. You mentioned the running game of the Pirates earlier on, T.O. One person you have to uh, take a look at, Sean McKenzie, who missed the first two games this year due to a leg injury, but the transfer from Virginia Tech has come onto the field the last two weeks. Had a phenomenal game last week, over 100 rushing yards against the Pirates opponent last week in Charleston Southern. Fortunately, was Pirates were unable to secure the victory as they fell as last week by the final score of 48 to 14 but a young man who's very talented and knows how to run the football yeah you're gonna have to lean on him having a running back like him who's averaging 6.4 yards per carry in the past two games um, allows you to be able to do some things in play action um, and really get the, off the defense to load up the box and allow you to be able to um, do some different things in a play action game okay
back here on ESPN Plus. Matt White, Travis Oliver here getting set and ready for the coin toss. Pirates in the reflex blue jerseys and pants. Lane in the white jerseys, white pants. And right now we're going to send it down to the sideline for the coin toss led by coach, or excuse me, referee Nate Black. Looks like Hampton has won the toss. And Hampton to receive. I think if you're Hampton, you're probably happy about this. You get a chance to get out on the field first, set the tone, uh, get Shy McKenzie going in the run game, um, and really try to set the tone here early um, if you're the Pirates. So this could turn out to be a, a good move. Uh, Lane, go ahead and defer and give you an opportunity to get your offense going. Once again, we thank you for joining us here on ESPN Plus for this college football broadcast featuring the Hampton Pirates and the Dragons of Lane College. Hampton, uh, FCS uh, independent this year, Travis, uh, after a 22-year membership in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Hampton electing to join the Big South. They will be competing in all sports in the Big South this year with the exception of football as you can uh, attest to as a former coach and former player T.O. Scheduling and football takes years to do, so Pirates an independent this year, but next year a full member in the conference. They'll appreciate that next year. That makes scheduling a whole lot easier because you already know you have a set certain amount of games that are going to be on the schedule, so you don't have to feel but maybe three or four non-conference opponents. Uh, makes life a little bit easier. Um, as Hampton went through the the, the ringer this year trying to get that schedule filled after uh, their move from the Big South. I mean, move from the MIAC. Set to kick for the Dragons is Vincent Lewis won Penna. The ball is teed up at the Dragon 35-yard line. Back to return for the Pirates. Looks to be Bell. And it's a nice end over end kick. Will come down right at the 5-yard line. Pirates there to field. Across the 15 to the 20. Breaks through a tackle to the 30, 35, 40. He's got room, 45, 50. He's got one man to beat across the 40, 30, to the 15, 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Pirates. There is a flag back at the Pirate 35-yard line, but Bell returns it 95 yards for the touchdown. We'll see what that penalty flag is here. The Dragons are looking as if it is going to be against Hampton. So... Uh, an impressive return for Bell. If I heard correctly, it was Carr and Shaka. Your super both call for holding. They will accept one of the two, obviously, and it will negate the touchdown and the Pirates will start from about their own 21-yard line to open the game here at T.O. And what I'm looking for here from the Pirates, this is uh, going to be interesting to see. Uh, Lane has a pretty good defensive player in Bryce McKenzie. Um, right now he's their leading tackler at defensive end. Uh, already has uh, seven tackles for loss, two and a half sacks, and he's forced a couple of farmers in recovery. So if I'm the Pirates, I'm paying a lot of attention to that young man um, to make sure he doesn't uh, come in there and wreck things, number 92. Uh, Brace McKenzie here. Yeah, correction, the penalty is going to be enforced from the tw from the 21. So the Pirates will start inside their own 10. And as we said, it will be number four, Williams, starting at quarterback for the Pirates. And on the quarterback keeper, he'll take it across the 30-yard line. First down and more. So one play and a new set of downs here for Hampton on the option. Well, Pirates seeing something in that 34 defense that uh, Lane is lined up in. Well, they're able to influence the, the end and the outside linebacker, and Delman read it and pulled it and saw a big crease that he could take advantage of. First and 10, Pirates go to the air. This is going to be Barney on the reception. He'll cross a first down marker, a flag thrown back at the Pirate 37-yard line. And that looks like that's going to be in the field. Of either block, or probably a block in the back or a holding there, um, trying to spring Bell on that uh, quick screen. Those plays right there are effective run plays as well for the Pirates. That's nothing but a, a quick handoff, a long handoff for the uh, offense. Offense, 
They're going to say blocking below the waist, or is that another way of saying clipping? Uh, no, blocking below the waist is now um, it's a rule where if you are outside the tackle box, you can't come back in and block or receive a defender low. It's another way they're just trying to clean up the game and take away some of the injuries um, on the legs. But if you were the Pirates, you probably would have hoped for a holding where that's only 10 yards, where here that block below the waist takes you back 15. So thank you for the new update on the rule there, T.O. Pirates penalty brings them back to their own 25-yard line going to be first down here for Hampton it's a four receiver set Williams in the shotgun nowhere to go through the air he's going to tuck and look to run he's going to be back inside his 20 turns the corner forced out of bounds near the 30 yard line great job by Williams avoiding the pressure not getting sacked and got out of bounds uh, yeah well Lane brought a blitz there they they sold out on the pre on the uh the deep on the coverage and just played zero coverage behind it uh, Williams with nowhere to go with it. The pressure was getting on him pretty quickly and found a lane to get free. It's going to bring up second down. Second and long here for Hampton. It's going to be about second and 13. Williams thought about the bubble screen, got uh, got away from the sack. Pass is incomplete to Shy McKenzie. It'll bring up third down and long. And Pirates have had uh, struggles here on third down this season as the Pirates so far this year is only 24%. They've converted 24% of their third downs. Um, so if you're Lane, this is where you want to bring, you want to be, you want them to be in. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see some pressure here um, to try to push them back even further here. They've had success um, bringing the blitz. Third down here, Pirates come out, four receiver set. Williams looking to his right, goes over the middle, has a man, complete first down. Hey, ball came out late where Pirates recover it, I believe. The receiver was able to fall back on top of it. That was Alec Dana, and it will be a first down for the Pirates. I think that was a blown assignment there as you look at the coverage. Uh, Lane was in a two-man where they were playing a press and trail technique with the defensive backs, and one of the defensive backs just lost his guys. He broke on the end cut. Great read by Williams to find him. Uh, a way to recover the ball if you're the Pirates. Lucky break. Williams, play action, looks downfield, goes over the middle. Another man, it's Bell. He bounces off one tackler across the 30, 25, two men in front of him, and he's tackled from behind across the 20-yard line. So the Pirates get into red zone territory. And a great job by the receiver, T.O., to stay on his feet after the initial contact and pick up another 10 or 15 yards. As a defensive back, you dream about hits like that on the receiver, get a clean shot, um, and for him to bounce off of it, that could be a little demoralized, but great job by uh, Bell staying alive and keep keeping the play going. Pirates back to the action. The flag throw to the end zone is incomplete. Looks to be probably holding here. There's two flags back there. As we wait for the call here from the official. They're going to get the running back Eason on the holding penalty. And I tell you, um, Lane must have saw something with this pirate offensive line because you watch that defensive line up front, they're really active with a lot of movement. They're doing a lot of stunning um, up front, and it looked like it's giving that pirate pass protection a little bit uh, – a little bit of a fix here on this first drive. So we'll see how the Pirates adjust to it uh, moving forward. Ball back to the Pirate 30-yard line. Pirates have to get to their own 10 here. Williams nearly goes down. He'll run up the middle. He'll pick up the penalty yardage and more. Brought down just shy of the 15-yard line. And there's another flag in the backfield. Going to be holding charge to Messiah Rice. And one t one thing we talked about uh, with this Pirate team so far this year was their lack of penalties. They've been pretty fundamentally sound. But today, the discipline not there here for the Pirates early on. Yeah, and part of it is some of it could be uh, you're playing down and you think you're playing down your opponent. You don't respect them. You feel like you should win this game. So you're not as disciplined as you normally would be. Um, and these could be drive killers to go from uh, what was almost, it would have been second and short now to uh, first and forever. Yeah, now it looks to be close to a, 
Well, Pirates are going to need about a 30-yard pickup here. It's going to be first and 30 from their own 40. Check down receiver is the running back out of the backfield. That's Robinson. He'll pick up a nice chunk of yards. However, still going to be second down and long. And smart play by the Pirates. Just pick up a few yards, uh, get closer to those first down sticks. You don't need to pick it all up in one play, especially on the first down play. So put yourself a little bit closer. Try to get another chunk of that back here if you can. It's going to look to be about second and 29 here. Play action again. Pirates looking downfield. Williams. Continuing to work, and he falls down trying to get away from a defender. It'll be it'll be a sack or a tackle for loss, if you will. It's going to bring up third down and long. Loss of a handful of yards there as Williams couldn't keep his balance. And and here's the decision time for the Pirates. Do you try to get all the yards back here um, and get the first down to try to get the extra uh, get the points uh, on a touchdown, or do you set it up so that you can maybe get in the field goal range? Third down. Williams over the middle. He's got a receiver. And he is still on his feet. He's going to be short of the first down, but it's going to make this field goal opportunity a little bit closer here for the Pirates. And Evan Lomax, I watched him in pregame, uh, uh, warming up, watching him kick, and he was pretty accurate today, and he was making them all the way back to 45 yards. He had, he had some good leg on it. They had a good lift and drive, so... Uh, not shocked here that they decided just to go ahead and let him kick. Um, this should be a chip shot for him. Should be about a 33-yard field goal attempt for the Pirates. Snap down. The kick is up. And the kick is good. Not the way the Pirates wanted their first drive today to end. They were picking up good chunks of yards. However, penalty yards, as you said before, T.O., really killed this drive and it results in the 33-yard field goal attempt. Pirates take the early lead here, 3-0 to zero with 9.29 remaining here in this first quarter. We're going to take a quick break. You're watching ESPN Plus coverage of college football. We'll be back. Eleven schools, more than 4,000 student athletes, one attitude. We are the Big South, where winners are made. Back here on ESPN Plus, Matt White, Travis Oliver, Pirates take the early 3-0 lead with that field goal on their opening drive. And, Teal, your thoughts on that opening drive for the Pirates? Uh, good job of execution from a play design standpoint with, with making the throw and catches. But Hampton, uh, with the penalties, really hurt themselves. And they're going to have to really look to clean that up moving forward so that they can Anthony maximize those drives. Anthony Evelyn with the kickoff return for the Dragons. He's brought down right at the lane 20-yard line. So we'll have our first opportunity to see Lane's offense as they come out onto the field, led by quarterback Marcus Reynolds. So far in the year, Reynolds has thrown for 440 yards and three touchdowns. Dragons come out, showing two wide, send a man in motion. It's going to be a handoff to the tailback, pick up a handful of yards there before he's brought down, bring up second down. And this is where the, I think uh, for if I'm Lane, you don't want to get in these situations against the Pirates. You don't want to get into the second and long, third and long situations. You want to try to stay ahead of the sticks. If you can get about four to five yards from first down, um, and, and in my opinion, maybe look to get the ball outside against the sec Hampton secondary, um, you might have a little bit more success and put yourself in, in some good situations. They're going to credit Sproul with the tackle. That was Jeffrey with a two-yard pickup. Second down and eight, some movement up front. Don't see a flag, but the throw, the pitch and catch along the right sideline is a completion. Great throw by Reynolds. I think he just threw it up thinking, oh, there is a flag in the backfield. I think he, just, it was, he thought he had a free play, but they'll take the result of the play. Great throw and catch there by the Dragons. And again, that was Ahmad Isaac. I talked about him in the opening. Uh, really speedy guy, quick guy. Uh, he returns punts for this Dragons um, off um, Dragons team. Um, he's a guy to watch out there if you're the Pirates. You have to 
Um, they have we have Hampton has their best defensive back matched up against them. Uh, he was they were he was in double coverage and made that catch. First down, Reynolds looks to his left. It's a bubble screen to the far side. Receiver runs right up the middle of the field. He's going to be brought down, but not after he gains the first down. That was number 85 on the catch. That's Amari Hampton. And he's actually their lead receiver. Uh, he comes into the season with uh, 218, I'm sorry, with 15 catches, 161 yards. Uh, pretty solid receiver, 6'2", uh, good, decent speed. So um, they have some weapons out there, the Dragons do. Uh, that they can take advantage of this Pirates secondary. Reynolds in the shotgun. He's got four receivers. Handoff, and he's hit. The receiver fumbles it. Pirates pick up the football, and he, we might have a return here for a touchdown. Pirates with the convoy running up the right sideline. Number six, that's Doucette. The linebacker just picked the ball off the ground, returned it about 60-some yards for a touchdown. But on the opposite side of the field, the ball carrier for Lane is still on the ground. That's Joshua Jeffrey. He took a shot, and he has not moved yet as the ball just came out. And Doucette just picks up the loose football and goes the other way with it for the score. Well, Doucette uh, with a big-time play there, but the, the pressure is what caused that. Um, he, uh, the running back, Jeffrey, got hit right as he was taking a handoff, so he was in a position where he really couldn't avoid the, the contact. So uh, you hope if you're the Dragons, and you hope just in general the young man's able to get up and walk off and uh, return to the football game because he is the Dragons' leading rusher. Um, so you hope the young man is all right, he's able to get up and continue playing. Yeah, hopefully the, the young man will be okay. But once again, a great job by this defense. They're going to review the play and make sure he wasn't down. But when you look at that uh, video, T.O., it really looked like the defense laid a good hit on the running back and the ball just came out. And credit you said for having the uh, wherewithal to realize what was going on, pick up the ball at about the Dragon 40, or excuse me, the Dragon 41, 42 yard line and went the whole and went all the way back, had a nice convoy of blockers. So credit the awareness of the Pirates defense of taking advantage of the uh, situation. And, they're, and, they're, and the officials are actually looking at two things here as they review this play. They're looking to see if it was a fumble, if he was down, but they're also checking to see that Doucette possibly step on the out-of-bounds line as he was going down the sideline. So they're looking at two different um, two different uh, things here to make sure that um, this play holds up. But, again, they're, they're bringing out some extra trainers here to check on Jeffrey. So I hope that uh, young man is okay and uh, – He's able to at least get off the field under his own uh, strength and power. And the sketch confirm the call on the field. So the touchdown stands. Pirates take a 9-0 lead. Extra point here on the way for Hampton. Lomax set to kick. Snap down, kick is up, and the extra point is good. The defense gets into some action here. They put another touchdown on the board. 10 to 0, our score. And the Pirates, just like that, make it a two score lead. Uh, and this is what you want to see if you're a, a Pirate fan, or even if you want to play, you want to see, you kind of take advantage of all the opportunities that are out there for you. You look at the opening kickoff, special teams had a chance to get involved. You know, penalty brought it back. Defensively, you're able to make a big play and turn it into points. Um, and plays like that help your offense kind of go out there and be a lot loose because now they can pretty much do what they want to do. They don't have to worry about uh, being restricted and looking at controlling the, controlling the ball. And they can take some risk on offense. So we'll see if Hampton, uh, what they try to do all offense, maybe you try to work on some stuff that you've been doing all practice and hadn't had to get a chance to get into in the games being that They've been playing a little comeback football these past few weeks. Officially, they're going to credit that forced fumble to Tyler Frazier and uh, give Mr. Doucette the 60-yard return for the score. And that again, that's what you like to see if you're the uh, Pirate fan. You like to see your the awareness of your defense to know that the ball was still live and to pick it up and to return it for the score. So the 10-0 lead here early on. Pirates set to kick off the ball again to the Dragons. Lomax has it teed up at the 35. It's a nice high handover. 
come down just inside the 10 yard line. The Dragons look to return across the 20 to the 25 before the return man is brought down. That was number 17 once again returning for the Dragons, Anthony Evelyn. And going back to that Doucette play, one of the things um, as a defender you're taught uh, when the ball's on the ground, if there's nobody around you or nobody around the ball, you want to make an attempt to pick it up and, and run with it. Um, and that's great awareness by Doucette to know that there was nobody around him and he was able to make a play on the football. As we return to play here on the field, uh, the Dragons on that last drive before the forced fumble actually had success moving the ball through the air here, T.O. Let's see if they go back to the air here and had some success picking up at least two first downs before the fumble. It's going to be a play action. Quarterback rolls to his left. He has a man, and that is Hampton again with the catch. He'll be brought down near the 30-yard line. But that's a, that's a good play on first down. You pick up four yards. Um, you get it to second and medium, pick up four or five yards, and you keep your offense on schedule. That's what offenses, offenses have. They want to be on schedule. They want to keep the – be able to call the plays that work best for those them in those situations. And second and medium opens up the playbook for you. It's a six-yard completion. will make it second and four here. Got to like the athleticism you've seen out of Reynolds here. He's comfortable throwing on the move and throwing there, you know, in the pocket. Unfortunately, that time is – as I was complimenting the quarterback, his receiver let him down. That was Quantavius Wilson. Just took his eye off the football and dropped an easy catch, and that'll bring up third down and short. The other thing you see from Reynolds is he's been extremely accurate here. Very accurate. He's made some really good throws, and that ball hit the receiver right in the numbers and in the hands, and you got to make those plays when your quarterback is getting you the ball like that. Yeah, Reynolds, six foot one, 200-pound senior, transfer from Georgia State here leading this offense for the Dragons. Look to answer a 60-yard touchdown uh, fumble return for Hampton. Third and four. Reynolds under pressure. He's going to be able to escape. He can move. He's going to be tackled from behind, but he'll have the first down at the Dragon 40-yard line. And, and this is where, where I thought that the passing game of the Dragons would give Hampton some problems as well because if you're having success throwing it, now Hampton's going to have to either come with the blitz and leave you in one-on-one -on -one situations, or they're going to have to play coverage, and you're going to have those running lanes for a very athletic quarterback. First and 10 for the Dragons ball now. They're going to mark it at their Dragon 39-yard line. It's a four-receiver set here. Reynolds will send his tail back. Trillo in motion. It'll be a draw to the right side. Pick up about four or five yards, brought down just shy of the Dragon 45-yard line. And at, to your point earlier, Tia, now going to the draw. That's more running lanes open for the running back as the Pirates are showing concern for the passing attack of Lane. Oh, yeah, you get the, those defensive linemen to start thinking, getting after the pass. They're thinking about rushing. So they're racing up the field and opening those creases for those backs. And uh, they were Trillo was able to find the crease on the outside and pick up a few yards there. Three receivers to the left, one single receiver to the top of the formation. Here on second down, looks to be another running play, and this time, tough sledding for the running back. He'll be hit back at the original line of scrimmage. Pirates defensive line making a play. Yeah, they brought a little pressure there on that play because they realized uh, they needed to do something a little different to create some opportunities to get to the quarterback uh, and was able to catch him in a, in a run play that allowed them to get the TFL there going to be third down and long same formation for the dragons reynolds in the shotgun got his back split out to his right for under five minutes here in the quarter reynolds under pressure he's going to throw on the run pass nearly intercepted i think that was Sproul that might have got a hand on it receiver who the pass was intended for was isaac and that'll bring up fourth down Ben, but don't break if you're the Hampton defense there, T.O. Yeah, you got off the field, but the thing that, that you, again, I'm the Dragons, I'm looking at, that was a, a, a great throw by the quarterback, almost picked, but it did, the receiver had a chance at the ball, and maybe the defender flashing across his face um, caught him off guard, but um, those that, that Hampton defense did bend, but didn't break and give their offense another chance here, and maybe even special teams a chance to make a play um, here with another big return. Pirates last week were able to block a punt. Brought some pressure this time. We've got a flag early on as Bell tries to return the punt. It's going to more than likely be an illegal block in the back here. 
after about a return of three yards there for Hampton. Yeah, the the, uh, the gunner there did a great job of getting there and uh, the Pirates special team trying to give Bell a chance, end up just shoving him in the back a little bit to push him past the return. Back. The team, number penalty. penalty charge against Hampton's number 23, that's Huff. And as we spoke about again, the penalties. The penalty's gonna push the Pirates back a little bit further um, and now put them in a situation where instead of it being um, about 70 yards of field to cover. Now you're looking at having to go to 85 yards. To right now, Pirates looking at four penalties for a total of 81 yards. And we're still in the first quarter. Yeah, I'm, if I'm Coach Prunty, I'm not happy about that. Uh, that's That's been your kind of one of the things you've been able to brag on. Bell gets a bubble screen and he's running across the 50, 40. The turning to the 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Pirates! Bell showing those world-class speed there on the outside. It was a simple pitch and catch to the wide receiver, and he goes 90-some-odd yards all the way for the score. Fantastic play there for the Pirate offense, and what, what's not going to get credit there is the blocking on the outside. Those receivers able to hold their blocks and create the scene for Bell. And when he got it, he put that right foot in the ground and just used that, that world-class speed to just take it run away from everybody. And the redshirt junior out of Maryland made that catch at just ahead of the 10-yard line. So that's about an 89-90 yard return for Ronald Bell. Extends his pirate lead now 16 to zero. Low match on the field now for the extra point and the Pirates minus the uh, penalty struggles here, T.O., have found some success getting the ball to their specialists on the outside. Well, that's what uh, Bill and Barney can do for you. Watch those two guys work in the slot, and they're really quick and fast and shifty guys. You want to get those guys the ball in space, and they can make people miss. Um, and that's you witness it right there with Bell. Um, and that's um, a couple times a day he's been able to make plays like that. Extra point is up and good. Score now 17 to 0. And here's where the test comes now for Lane. How do you respond to, to being in this situation? Because they haven't really been in this situation where they've been down by this much this early. They've been pretty competitive in um, their games this year. Uh, most of their games come in by eight or nine point loss, um, other than the one game against Morehouse. Um, they've been very competitive and defensively been able to hold up. So, Yeah, we talked about that in our pregame, T.O. Against, on Labor Day weekend against Lincoln University, Missouri, they fell by the score of 10-7. to As you mentioned, Lane blown out by Morehouse, 42-0. Their game against Livingstone postponed due to Hurricane Florence. But since then, Albany State was a one-touchdown game, and Tuskegee on the 29th of September was a 17-8 to final. So this team is, has really only been in this position one time, and we'll see if Coach Burroughs and the Dragons will respond here to what's been a 17-zip run by this Hampton offense and defense who put a touchdown on the board. And Anthony Evans looks to try and put his team on his back here on special teams. He returns the kick to about the Dragon 40-yard line. So he's definitely someone that pirates are going to have to keep their eye on he's showing athleticism and speed here in the return game well that's what if, if you're the uh you're the dragons again that's a great way to kind of get it started to bounce back from uh, what has been a kind of a what could be a back breaking play to, to on a bubble screen for a receiver to take off like that so to get a good return set your offense up at the plus 40 uh you, you're trying to give them a little momentum give us give your team a little spark um, and the Dragons are hoping to see here if that spark could manifest here on the offensive side now. Officially, they're going to credit Bell with an 85-yard touchdown catch on that last possession for the Pirates. So, see how the Dragons respond here. It's a five-receiver set now for the Dragons. Going to take a shot deep. They've got a man overthrown was Reynolds' pass intended for Wilson. Wilson was able to get by both defenders. And fortunately for the Pirate fans, that uh, front line was giving Reynolds all the trouble they could muster and force that pass to be just slightly off target. Yeah, the more I'm watching, the more I'm watching this game, 
the more I'm getting more and more impressed with Reynolds, um, his ability to make some throws. He actually put the ball the only place he could put it, which was, was leading the receiver to the end zone. The receiver just made a break to try to tiptoe the sideline, but um, miscommunication there. But he's showing some, uh, some ability there for the Dragons. And Second down and 10, back to the running game go the Dragons. And that's the big man carrying the ball. That's Hill. He was able to run through a, a, a jersey tackle, if you will, pick up about five, six yards on the carry. I think, nope, thought it was a late flag coming in, but nope. It's going to be third down and short. A third and medium, if you will, about third and five. And with Jeffrey, I'd expect to see Hill get a few more carries. Um, he's their second leading rusher from the running back position. Uh, Reynolds is the second leading rusher on the team, but um, Hill has seen some time this year and has been fairly effective for uh, Lane's offense. So expect to see him get the ball a little bit more. Four receiver set. Reynolds under pressure. This time, Doucette able to corral the quarterback and sack him in the backfield. Going to be a loss. Ball uh, will be now marked back at the Dragon 31 yard line. And the Pirates defense beginning to solve the offensive line of Lane. Capri Doucette, the senior linebacker from Williamsburg, transferred to Hampton from Oklahoma. So Boomer Sooner, if you will, on that play for Doucette. The big sack will make this fourth and long and bring the punting unit back out onto the field for Lane. Punting again will be Juan Pena. Bell. And you can see why. Makes the catch. Thought about calling a fair catch, but he's eventually corralled by number 82, and that's Munson of Lane. Well, he fooled me. I thought he fair caught it for a second. I thought he did he too. <laughs> but you can see why Doucette, uh, you know, why he's been he's been so effective. Um, has some speed, good strength, uh, persistent on the pass rush. Um, he's the Pirates' leading tackler. Um, he's out there just making plays, and you, you see him fly all around the field, but you can understand why he ended up at Oklahoma now when you see him play. Um, he has a motor. That's what you want from a defensive player. You want a guy that, that's nonstop all the time. And he's definitely been a bright spot for this Pirate defense this year. Williams uh, still in at quarterback. will hand off to McKenzie. Only the second time we've called his name. I might be his first rushing attempt of the game here. So the Pirates primarily been going to the air attack early on as we are close to the two-minute mark here in the first quarter. Pirates on their last drive only took one play to go 85 yards to Bell for the touchdown pass, and McKenzie now will look to work the running game. He'll be brought down just shy of the 40 there on second down. Bring up third and five. Pirates getting the call from the sideline here. Williams. Will send McKenzie out at, to line up at wide receiver. And this is going to create some mismatches here. You can see uh, Lane trying to figure out what to do. And I wouldn't be surprised to see a, a, I was going to think a draw there because they took the linebackers out of the middle field, but they went with a quick out and picked up the first down. Great execution by the Pirates. Great hands by Thompson. He was right at that first down marker. Secure the catch. Gives the Pirates a new set of downs here as we're under 90 seconds in the first quarter. Williams. Play action. Looks downfield. Will hit the running back Easton out of the backfield. It'll be a first down. Nice move. Runs through a defender or two before he's brought down in Dragon territory at about the 38, 39 yard line. Well, you got to like what you're seeing out of Dale Williams. The patience in the passing game and not trying to force it down the field. That was pretty good coverage but able to check it down to the back. Again, play action to Robinson. Now the pass to the outside. That is Barney, and he'll pick up another chunk of yards before he's brought down just shy of the 20-yard line. You'll see Barney and, and Bell kind of interchangeable in that slot position on those screens. Um, and both both young men able to uh, – pretty shifty guys and able to make people miss in open space. It's going to be second and one here in the nine-yard pitch and catch to the receiver. Williams, play action again. Looks over the middle, has a receiver pass off the mark, incomplete, intended, I believe, to gr to number 20, Graham. Bring up third and short, 29 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. You see the Pirates kind of going to a no huddle, picking up the tempo here, T.O., are they trying to wear down Lane here? 
Well, I think that's what they see something in the depth that they have um, over um, Lane. They're able to play a few more people, and um, Lane's not able to get substitutions in and out when you go quick. So you're able to kind of tire them out a little bit and, and hopefully break a play there. Yeah, Lane will call the timeout. It'll be third and one ball just outside of the red zone here for the Pirates. But the last few drives out of Hampton, we've seen them go to the air attack here on third and one, T.O. How do you think the Pirates attack this uh, Dragon defense? I think what they're seeing in that 34 coverage, they're getting, they've been getting some, uh, seeing some scenes in that two-man coverage that they've been playing with the check downs to the back um, after the receivers clear everybody out. They've been able to get the ball out in the flat, um, and the receivers have been doing a good job of uh, – making the blocks at the point of attack. Um, I just think what they've been able to see is, is Lane hasn't been pressuring them as much, so they know they're going to have the time where um, you give the quarterback enough time, somebody's going to come open. Coverages aren't made to last, but for about three to four seconds. Um, and they've been able to kind of, you see Delman's been able to sit back in the pocket, four, five, six, go to his first, second, and third reads. Um, and maybe that's something they, they, they picked up as they made the adjustments for the first, first half, I mean the first drive that they could, they could air it out against Lane, they feel like. Third and one, ball on the 25-yard line of Lane. Williams will hand off to McKenzie. McKenzie turns the corner. I think he has the first down. It's going to be close, and they will give it to him. Normally, you're used to seeing Sean McKenzie run north and south. This time, he tried to run around the uh, line of scrimmage where there was a big convergence of both lines, offense and defense. Lane had a shot to stop him, but took too long, and the running back able to pick up the first down. Will Robinson back in at running back, first and 10 ball. Just now inside the 25-yard line for Hampton, and a great defensive play by Lane College. Two defenders there to bring down Robinson. That was number 48 leading the charge. That's Williams, and big number 95, the D lineman Collins also in on the tackle. And against that 34 defense, you want to try to crease those insides because they got the speed and athleticism of the outside linebackers on the outside. And that's going to end the first quarter. Pirates lead here at home 17-0. to We thank you. You're watching ESPN Plus College Football Coverage. We'll be right back. Back here on ESPN Plus College Football Coverage here from Hampton, Virginia, the Hampton Pirates hosting the Dragons of Lane College. Matt White, Travis Oliver here, bringing you this non-conference matchup between two historically black colleges. Hampton, a new member of the Big South, and Lane representing the SIAC. Pirates jumping out to a 17-0 lead, and it's going to be a quarterback keeper here as Williams will be brought down on the option. Well, the, the thing I'm looking at as well um, is how Lane's going to hold up with this the, the heat and the, the mugginess and humidity of this area. You can see it's getting warm out there. Um, and you just wonder how well they'll hold up um, as they may not be familiar with the, the climate here in the uh, Tidewater area of Virginia. Pirates taking a shot downfield through the air. Receiver unable to hold on to the ball. Barney had room along the sideline. He would have been short of the first down anyway. But it will bring up fourth down. Let's see if the Pirates will go for it. The offense now will come off the field. And Lomax will come on the field to attempt what will be his second field goal here in the afternoon. Evan Lomax, a five foot eight freshman, coming out to attempt a long field goal. And you wonder, um, the, with the pause, maybe they will worry about kicking into the wind, even though there's no wind here as you can as you look around. But a lot of his warm-up kicks were on the other end, so kicking into this closing, how that might affect them. 46-yard attempt here, snap down. The kick is up. It's low, but it's long enough, and it is good. So credit the freshman coming in and knocking down the long field goal opportunity. Evan Lomax making an impact, making a second field goal. 20 to zero the score now here from Hampton. And what an, another impressive drive for Hampton. Didn't result in a touchdown, T.O., but it's still points on the board. Yeah, but again, the, the getting behind the sticks, they were in second and long, they're second and 15, uh, got some of the yards back. Uh, but getting yourself behind the sticks is where offense want to stay on schedule. You want to be from first and 10, the second, medium, the short. 
um, put yourself in a, in a third down where you have the option to run or pass um, and not be predictable there. So um, Hampton still has some things to clean up, but you got to be excited about um, the drives you've had here if you're Hampton. Um, hadn't had to punt the ball yet. They've ended every drive so far with some type of points. Lomax will come back out on the field. He'll tee the ball up at the Pirate 35-yard line. Evelyn looks to return again here for Lane. I believe that's Isaac back there with him. They set Isaac up to get the ball here. Uh, I think they feel like um, they can get the ball in his hands as much as, as possible. He might have an opportunity to do something big here with the ball. It's going to be a deep kick through the back of the end zone. Give the Dragons first and 10 after the touchback. Great kick there from Lomax. Evelyn showing some explosive returns earlier. Pires not even want to give him a chance. And Lomax over there celebrating his touchback with the golf swing celebration. <laughs> hey, man, even the kicker gets some love every once in a while. Hey, I'm not mad at it. Go out there and you, you, that's your moment to shine. Go ahead and shine. But that's the best way to, to negate good return is to go ahead and just boot the ball through the end zone, and now you don't have to worry about uh, the possibility of a return. Yeah, the Pirates did get burned on a kick return for a touchdown last week when they hosted Charleston Southern. So this time not wanting to play with fire. First and 10 from the 25-yard line of the Dragons. They'll send a man in motion. We've got a whistle, and it looks to be a timeout called by Lane College. Yeah, they were getting close to a delay of game um, penalty there. It looked like they took them a while to get that play going. Um, so the coaches recognize that rather just call a timeout instead of um, going to first and 15. As a former coach, Gio, how does that happen when you're coming out of what's basically a timeout after the kickoff? Don't, don't, as an offensive coordinator, don't you already kind of already have the next play already designed or ready to call? Or are you waiting to see what the defense lines up in, in those scenarios? Well, I think uh, in a lot of those situations, sometimes it's uh, guys not maybe sure where to line up. Even though they get the call early enough, they're still not necessarily sure. Um, they're talking through protections as they look at the defense and how they set up. They're trying to make sure they're in the right, uh, right, right call for that play. The blocking scheme matches up. So sometimes they're just going through that process can slow you down and you kind of negate the fact that you only have 25 seconds instead of 40 seconds. Reynolds will send a man in motion. He's got two backs split out in the backfield. He's going to step up. Pass Ooh. is caught. Impressive display there by the wide receiver, Hampton. It almost looked like the pass was thrown behind him, but it just looked like he kind of hung in the air just an extra second and was able to bring down the big completion. And I say it, da 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 da, -da. I <laughs> think that might have a chance for Sports Center Top 10. And that was an amazing catch, one-handed Obel Beckham, Beckham style catch. First and 10 from the 50, the handoff is to Trulio. He'll pick up a nice chunk of yards there. Be brought down in Pirate territory at the 43-yard line. And this is where Lane wants to be. You got second and short, so now your playbook opens up. You have the ability to run, throw, trick plays in, the, in this plus side of the field. So um, you can be creative here if you're Lane with what you want to do offensively. Hill will go in motion. Uh, they go back to the running back, and this time Doucette makes another play in the backfield. He trips up Trulio on the carry. Ladies and gentlemen, get used to that name. Capri Doucette, he's a ball player. It's going to be third down. Ball has been spotted at the Hampton 48-yard line. Big tackle for loss there for Doucette. Makes this from second and short to third and long here for the Dragons. Four receivers set. Reynolds, one back split out in the backfield with him. And shotgun, Sproul coming after him. Quick outlet to the running back. He's able to go over the defender. And depending where they spot the ball, I think he's got a first down. Uh, looking at that ref, he might be a little bit short. I think he spotted him just short of the 40 of the 40 yard line. Uh, so if I'm I'm Lane, I might want to try to get that review because it looked like he might have been a little bit closer than where the ref officials spotted it. Uh, but we'll see what they do up here in the booth. Yeah, Lane will come out on fourth down with the offense still on the field. 
as you mentioned, T.O. Ball spotted on the Pirate 41-yard line. Lane needs to get one yard here to keep this drive alive. Trailing by 20 points. They're going to go for it here. Reynolds under center has got Hill in motion. And it looks like the Pirates jumped off sides. Looked like that was big number 99 on the end. Marr. Oh. They call delay of game. That's a huge penalty. That was a big save for the Pirates because I think everybody in the stadium just knew that was a offside penalties on offside penalty on the Pirates. So um, that for Lane, instead of maybe picking up the first down and keeping your drive alive, now you have to send your punt team out here um, and put your defense back on the field, who haven't been very successful so far today. Hang up back on the field. He'll be standing inside his own 40. Bell at the Pirate 10, waits the punt. Snap is away, kick away clean. Bell calls the fair catch, <laughs> and it will be Pirate football. Last time we were all confused. <laughs> yeah, I think he knew he had that punt safe team out there, and he didn't want to take that big hit that was coming. But And with that, we're going to take a quick break here. You're watching ESPN Plus presentation of college football. Hampton Pirates lead the Lane Dragons 20-0. to zero. We'll be back. Golden melty cheese all on a toasty little bun. Back here on ESPN Plus, college football presentation here from Hampton, Virginia. Mad White broadcasting alongside the all MEAC safety Travis T.O. Oliver here as the Pirates lead 20 to 0. Williams takes a snap. It's going to be handed off to Sean McKenzie. And he will be stopped immediately. The one. Negative, you'd say, against Hampton so far today has been their inability really to get the running game going, but that's been more so they've committed to the pass because it's been so successful today. Yeah, and, and at this point in the game, you, you want to start. You don't want to get out of rhythm. You want to continue to run, throw the ball if you're having success, but you also want to get a chance to run it and, and work on some of those things you need to get better at. And Hampton needs to be able to establish the run, um, and that's somewhere they've been struggling so far this season with running the ball. Second and 12 here for Williams. He's got time. He looks over the middle. His cleats picks up the first down and more. Ronald Bell, ladies and gentlemen. I tell you what, if I was playing back when I, I would hate to see that little fella in those things <laughs> like that. Oh, gosh, he's just able to. He's like a, a little joystick out there just, just juking around and cutting and changing direction. He's a tough tackle. Pirates stick with the up-tempo offense. Play action. Four receivers. Williams looks down the middle. Nowhere to go. He's going to tuck it and run. He's got a linebacker to beat. He got it. First down again for Hampton in this high-octane offense today. I tell you, they've been able to neutralize uh, Brace McKenzie, who's been a terror for this uh, lane college defense. Um, we really hadn't been able to call his name today because the Pirates have done a good job of uh, making sure he hasn't been a part of, uh, of disrupting the offense. Pirates going to slow it down here. Look to the sideline. It's another four receiver set. McKenzie in the backfield at running back. Under 10 minutes to go here. Pirates 20 to 0. Offense and defense both were scoring opportunities today. Williams looks underneath. He's going to step through the line. Cross the 50. 45 before he's tackled. It's going to be a first down. Tackle number 33 from Lane. That's Brown, the D Cameron Brown, the D lineman, able to track down Williams, but not after the Pirates get another first down. The only thing I'm thinking here, if I'm, I'm Coach Prunty, is you want Delman Williams to maybe sometimes take a slide or go down a little quicker there and not take those shots with those big guys falling on them and uh, risk injury. Right now, Williams, 8 of 12, 200 yards a touchdown. Longest pass was 85 yarder. To Bell for the lone score on the ground today. Williams 24 yards rushing. Handoff to Robinson. Robinson right up the middle, and he'll be close to another first down. I think he's going to have it on that Robinson second on burst of momentum near the end of the run. And you can see Lane kind of being a little deflated right here on this drive. Look a little tired. They're bringing in some fresh bodies, but uh, the rule states if Hampton doesn't sub out, the hey don't have the weight on you. So Hampton. Uh, trying to speed it up and maybe catch him off guard and forces Lane here to have to take a college to not get the penalty. Yeah, Lane calls the timeouts. their last timeout here of the half. Again, we talked about, you know, 
the depth advantage for Hampton here trying to pick up the tempo wear down lane but uh, just looking at some stats here Tio passing yards for the Pirates 200 yards through the air Lane with 73 on the ground. Hampton 22 rushing yards, and they've held Lane to just seven. That's a pretty good, pretty good day if you're the Pirates. You still want to see those rushing yards be up there a little bit more because that allows you to really set the tone and, and control the clock. Even though they've been able to do it with their their passing game, but you see here now on this drive, um, Hampton's been able to effectively uh, get some stuff going with the run. It's been quarterback runs, not design runs, but Delman Williams been able to use his legs to find some creases when the pass hasn't been there. It's going to be second down and short. Will Robinson was marked just shy of that first down on the last carry. Three receivers set. Robinson will still be in a tailback. Williams looks to the air. He's going to throw it towards the end zone. He's got one-on-one -on -one and a touchdown. No, the official says he was out of bounds, but an impressive play by the receiver. Number 81, Bonds, with the man all over him, brought it in. And again, part of the Pirates' transition into the Big South, plays are reviewable. Be curious if Coach Prunty and his staff will ask the officials to take another look at that as Bonds did a great job. And correct me if I'm wrong, in college, you only have to have one foot. They only need one foot, and he tried to drag it in. But what you also see in those situations is, is when that play happened, the officials automatically start reviewing it already. McKenzie had a best run of the day, but he loses the football at the end, and he's slow to get up. The fumble recovery picked up by Streeter, the linebacker, number nine of Lane College, and he's going to return it to the, to Lane's own 43 or 44 yard line. McKenzie going to be checked out by the Hampton training staff. He's been battling a leg injury all year long, missed the first two games. For Hampton had a nice game last week, about 130 rushing yards. But last week he had a fumble to go along with the Pirates. Four team fumbles and one interception for five turnovers last week. And while he's getting looked at on Saturday night. Back here on ESPN Plus presentation of college football, Matt White and all MEAC safety, Travis T.O. Oliver here in Hampton, Virginia, where the Dragons look to take advantage of a turnover here from Hampton. Sean McKenzie was, was helped, was assisted to the sideline by the Hampton training staff as he fumbled the ball. Hopefully we can get an update on him later. But Reynolds back out on the field. He's going to keep it on the quarterback run from the 40. He's going to cross the 45 before he gets out of bounds. He must have heard you and your advice to uh, <laughs> Williams of Hampton on avoiding some of the unnecessary hits, and he'll pick up five yards before he steps out of bounds. And good read by the quarterback. They went with the, the zone read, um, the option-type style play. Um, and, and Reynolds is actually a really capable runner. Again, as stated earlier, he's the second leading rusher for this Lane College football team. So he has the ability to, to do some things with his legs. Officials marked him out of bounds at the 48, so it was a pickup of eight. It's going to be handoff to Hill, and the big man just burrowed through that line of scrimmage, picked up three yards, and it's going to be another first down here for the Dragons. Move the chains as we reach the seven-and-a-half-minute mark. Lane trying to get some momentum here, T.L., before uh, we reach halftime here. Not completely out of it. It's a three-score game, but it, if you're going to make a move here, if, Lane has got to be now. If I remember correctly, they should be getting the ball to start the second half. They do get the ball to start the second half, and they're actually fighting against the trend for them. They're actually, when you look at what they do offensively, they end the halves very well. They've been able to, all the majority of their points have come at the end of this first half and the end of the second half. So um, the trend says they, they should be able to possibly pull out some points here. We got a flag coming from the back side. It's going to be... As it stands, a run of about five yards for Trill. It's going to be a sideline warning against Hampton University. Well, someone may have said something to an official or as the, the line judge uh, trying to move down, maybe uh, he was about to be obstructed and the, the back judge saw it and wanted to just warn Hampton to back up off the white and give the officials some space. Um, in 
the heat of the game is hard for coaches sometimes not to want to be out there and, and get the guys situated. Second and six here. It's going to be a quarterback keeper again. Reynolds dives near the 40. Needs, needs, needs to get to the 38 of Hampton for another first down. So it's going to be third down. And they're doing a little a little bit differently here offensively for Lane. They're doing a little misdirection with the jet sweep actions and the option reads. Um, just trying to get the, the Hampton defense moving in one direction and counter it the other way. Uh, trying to create some natural creases Once with the keep, misdirection. Keep right on Doucet here on the far side. He's going to get double teamed. And they go right to that side of the field. Receiver is able to break a shoestring tackle and pick up some more yards. That's Isaac on the reception. And again, I had we hadn't heard his much name as much as I thought we would. You remember penalty he made a big catch down the sideline and um, he's a, a young man that has the ability to make some plays in the passing game um, and that was a big catch on third down and good run after catch yeah big completion here down to the Hampton 25 yard line first in the run another healthy pickup on the ground it's gonna be about a six yard pickup there for Lane Torello inside the 20 yard line down to about the 19 Lane College looking here again. Like I said, they've been pretty good at ending the quarters with ending the halves with points. So um, if they can get a score here, that'll that'll be huge for momentum and keeping those guys going into the second half. Another run here is going to be Trill on another carry. Looks like he's going to have a first down here again. That's first down. Lane continues right. their march towards the goal line. Four and a half minutes remaining here in the half. Plenty of time for the Dragons as they are knocking on the door here in the red zone. And this is going to be a good matchup in the red zone. Hampton on the season has allowed 100%. Uh, every time a team has been in the red zone for Hampton, they are 100% at scoring points um, and scoring touchdowns, unfortunately. If you're a lane, you're excited about that because you're finally in the red zone and you're hoping you can keep that trend going. Once again, you got to credit the athleticism of Reynolds as that snap was very high. He was able to corral it and got it to Hill. Hill was stopped by two prior defensive linemen. Brings up second down and 10. They're going to go outside to Rio. To Rio's got a blocker. He's going to be hit right at the six yard line and brought down. Bring up third down. To heel on the reception. Let's see where they mark it. The important thing to mention here, T.O., is Lane can still get a first down. And that's, that was the decision I'm thinking about here with um, uh, Coach Burroughs is what do you do here? Do you want to just get the first down and maybe give yourself three more, three or four more cracks at a touchdown or go for it all and maybe possibly have to go for it on fourth or settle for a field goal attempt? So looking like third and two, Reynolds is going to roll with it. He's being tracked by the defender, and he's got enough for the first down. And that was clearly the design of that play. Get the quarter outside. Worst case scenario there, he gets the first down. If he has a chance at the end zone, you take it. But first and goal for Lane. They've marched about si almost 70 yards from where they picked up the fumble from McKenzie. Now find themselves first and goal. Ball marked at the Hampton four-yard line. And this is going to be a test for Hampton down here. Uh, can they, they hold up and keep these guys out of the end zone? Uh, as as Lane has come in with their big package and and a bad snap here Reynolds or excuse me the running back Trillo is gonna have to fall on it all the way back at the Hampton 29 yard line and Hampton right now is 24 yard line excuse me Hampton right now is thanking somebody because they came got a caught a break here as they were as Lane was knocking on the door of a touchdown and a bad snap um, in which a couple of snaps like you mentioned earlier had been kind of high and Reynolds were making a good play on him, so. Yeah, that one just went right over the head of the quarterback. Fortunately, Trillo was able to fall down on top of it. So second and goal now from all the way back at the Pirate 23-yard line. Pirates can't fall asleep here. This kind of opens up more of the playbook again for Lane. 
and most teams like to be on the edge of the, the red zone because you have the whole field to work with. Nearly an interception. It looked like that was Carr in coverage. That was really good coverage by that Pirate secondary as they were going for Mark Hampton. He's the guy that made that ex extremely exciting catch early, the one-handed catch. So he showed you has the ability to go up and get it. But great job of the safety being over the top to help knock away and have an attempt actually at coming away with an interception. The interesting scenario here for the Pirates defense, as long as they don't let anyone get behind them, they can force the field goal opportunity here. And you have to be fundamentally sound here. The only way Lane gets a first down is through a personal foul here. Reynolds drops it back. The mark, I'm not sure if it was deflected, but the incomplete pass will bring a fourth down. Great play design, I think, there by, by Lane to get uh, Hampton over the middle on the post looking at the coverage. Um, I just think the throw was a little high and a little off. But the, and he found the hole in the Hampton secondary where you just talked about not letting anyone get behind you. And they managed to still kind of get behind the Hampton secondary. Um, they caught another break. Um, but those are the plays that, as a coach, you don't want to have to always depend on catching a break. You want to be able to execute. Um, the Pirates definitely need to do better in those situations. Paying you to attempt to kick that up. And the kick hits the upright. No good. Tough break for Lane and to your point earlier T.O. for the first time this year the Hampton defense stops a team from scoring at all once reaching the end zone or the red zone and and the, the amazing thing the crazy thing about that trend is for Lane they were only 29 all right so Hampton's faced with uh, a decision here and I think if I'm coach Prunty I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try to get some yards here on first down uh, with all my timeouts and possibly see if I can get some points in this situation here. Uh, so we'll be interested to see how they come out. But it looks like Hampton is going to try to get some points here and not settle for uh, just going into the half 20 to 0. So Hampton takes over first and 10 um, at their own start line. It'll pick up maybe about five or six yards. So. This is going to kind of tell, see what Hampton's going to do as they sub in. They bring in uh, William Robinson to see if they can maybe break one quick here. But they don't look like they're in much of a rush. No, not at all. One thirteen and counting here. It'll be second down. Looks like Williams waiting on the call here from the sideline. 20 seconds shown on the play clock as we now reach the one-minute mark here in the half. Pirates come out from four wide. And looks like an audible here with eight seconds here. I think Hampton is just going to be uh, content with going into the half with a 20-0 lead and coming out in the second half and seeing uh, what they can make happen Robinson in the second half. Robinson forced out of bounds on the run. It'll bring up third down. 33 seconds left. The game clock and the play clock are almost in sync. So the Pirates will more than likely have to take a snap here. But I've, I've seen Hampton maybe just handing what they've been doing, handing the ball off, um, just getting a, getting a couple yards, going into the half, come out and make some adjustments and see if they can continue their dominance in the second half. Williams will keep it on the option, pick up some blockers across the 40, and then he'll elect to go down. And that will take us to halftime. Hampton Pirates lead here at home over the visiting Dragons of Lane College 20 to zero. And it's really been a, a, a combined effort, T.O., between the offense and the defense, both scoring here for Hampton. Well, yeah, as, as we saw, Hampton with the uh, – they got the, the opening kickoff that was called back, and they managed to get a field goal on that drive. But then they came back in the uh, second drive, able to manage to get some points, um, off, actually off of a defensive score. So everybody's getting involved here in the, in the uh, scoring game. But you would like to see, if you're Hampton's offense, you would like to see uh, more of those drives coming away with touchdowns and, 
and less of them coming away with field goals. And with that, we'll take a quick break. We'll be back shortly with some thoughts here at halftime and looking over some stats. You're watching ESPN Plus coverage of college football. We'll be back. Get two breakfast sliders for $2.99. Real honey from real bees. Real butter from real cows. Welcome back to ESPN Plus coverage of college football. Matt White here with Travis Oliver and Tio. We've seen a pretty exciting first half of football. The Hampton Pirates getting on the ball force with the field goal. Then the defense coming through with a 60-yard fumble return for a touchdown. Then an 85-yard pitch and catch, Toronto Bell. And then another field goal just a few minutes ago from Lomax. Let's just take a look at some of these big plays and some of the standout players we've seen on both sides of the ball. Well, I think for Hampton, uh, they've been able to, to do what they want to do in passing the ball. Delman Williams did a great job of finding the open guys and putting the ball on target. And when it's not been there, he's been able to keep the play alive with his legs. Um, Hampton's been able to get some explosive plays. Ronald Bell with a big 85-yard um, catch and run, uh, which was a lot on him and the blocking on the outside. Um, and then the running game, Hampton, they got to get it going in the second half. They got to be able to establish the run to really ice. Fumble recovers the touchdown. Uh, Lane has to find a way to stop those guys from getting those big plays. But it's been the half of big big plays for Hampton. Uh, they, everything they've gotten has been off of big chunks um, with the scoring opportunity. So Han Lane has to find a way to try to slow that down to get himself a chance to win this football game. Pirates so far with over two yards coming through the air. As T.O. said, Delman Williams really uh, making an impact on this game, both out, out running and throwing as the quarterback of this team. But you mentioned the running game. Pirates have not really been able to get that going. We saw Shai McKenzie start to show some signs of life, then had that costly fumble on the Pirates' second to last drive of the half. Well, I was paying attention to him on the sideline to see how, how they were managing that injury to see if he might make a return in the second half. Um, they looked like they were taping him back up, like he may try to give it a go in the second half. And that's going to be huge for the Pirate running game if they can get him going again um, and get him back out on the field. Yeah, we talk about Williams through the air, so you have to talk about his receiving core, led by Ronald Bell with that 85-yard touchdown catch. But that's just one name to mention in this talented uh, receiving core. Oh, yeah. Uh, Brandon Barney's made a couple plays in there. Uh, they've been getting the ball out to the back. They've been checking it down. Delman Williams has been using all his weapons at his, expose, at his disposal to really take advantage of this Lane College defense. So this Hampton offense really getting going. The defense, we mentioned before, set scooping and scoring after the forced fumble by a teammate and able to have the awareness to go all the way back 60-plus yards for the touchdown. Well, yeah, they've had a lot of success early, and that secondary early in the game kind of stood up a little bit to the test. But as you saw in that last drive before the half, um, Lane was able to manage to do some things through the air and even with misdirection with 
really stretching the defense horizontally across the field and making them run. Um, so look for the Hampton Power to make some time here in the South to maybe cut off some of the running game that started to happen for Lane and not give up those plays in the passing game. Okay, with that, we're going to take a quick break. Come back, we'll take a look at the Lane Dragons and our predictions for the second half. You're watching ESPN Plus coverage of college football.
Ooh, I hope it's a life insurance policy. What? It's a sensible gift. Protection. Welcome back to Armstrong Stadium, this ESPN Plus broadcast of Hampton University Pirates versus the Lane College Dragons. We're set for the second half kickoff as Evan Lomax sends an end over end kick down. And we have the Dragons. Anthony Evelyn on the return and he breaks it up the middle and, and a touchdown saving tackle there by the Pirates as the Dragons look to start this second half with some momentum and, and hopefully continue the momentum they had to end the second half. Yeah, that touchdown saving tackle there. That was Caleb Brown was able just to get enough jersey of Anthony Evelyn. We talked about him in the first half as one of the most dangerous weapons that this team has. And Lomax, the last time, didn't even give him a chance to return it. And that's why, T.O., as we said during halftime, you know, this is a very talented Lane College team. You have to give a lot of credit to the quarterback and Reynolds. He's been accurate for the majority of his throws on the run, in the pocket. He's had some issues where his receivers dropped some passes. But uh, you got to give this team a lot of credit. They're still fighting and trying to claw their way back. Just It's just a three-touchdown deficit, as we saw right before the end of the half. Lane was able to drive about 60, 70 yards all the way down to the four or five-yard line of Hampton before a string of unfortunate events resulted in them coming away with uh, out any points but this is still a very talented team and you just need one or two plays to break one open exactly and happy to see damon woodcock able to walk off the field after uh being banged up a little bit on that on that kickoff as the dragons take over here on first down at the um, looks like the 45 44 yard line on their own side of the field it's going to be a handoff to the tailback and trio He'll gain maybe a yard. He's, for those just joining us, real really shouldering the load at running back with Hill after a uh, injury to the starting tailback in Jeffrey. He took a big hit early on, resulted in a fumble return for a touchdown for the Pirates. But since then, number 21's come in and spelled at the running back position. Reynolds again here, second down. Hands right back to his running back. And a shoestring tackle up front. Looks like that was Brown again with another shoestring tackle and the Pirates here um, as uh, that was cruel on that previous play on the tackle they've made some adjustments to try to try to keep this running game in check where um, the Dragons were able to have some success using the running game going into that uh, end in the half there third down about seven eight yards and the sack of the quarterback Great job by the Pirate front four. It looked like that was the big man up front, number 97, Desmond Certavant, as well as number 99, I think that was Marr. Yeah, and the Pirates caught a break as Amari Hampton uh, was free in the middle of the field. Um, if if Reynolds gets the chance to set up, I think their band's playing their fight song over there with some points on the board. So great job by the defense there of getting to the quarterback before he can find that open receiver. Pirates brought pressure. Pena able to get rid of it. Bell recovers the punt. However, a flag thrown at the point. He received the ball. And Bell finally brought down after about a 18, 19 yard return. Great effort, but it will all be for not as there was a flag thrown back near the 21 yard line of Hampton. And I'm sure it's going to be another illegal block in the back, T.O. Yeah, the gunner did a great job of getting down there. And it was a kind of a touchy situation there. Uh, but as the, the defender, you learn to kind of ease up and give them a chance to go ahead and, uh, and, and, and either fair catch the football or let the returner kind of have to make a play on his own as you don't want to get that penalty. 
penalty number six for Hampton. And for the Pirates, I'm looking to see if Shy McKenzie is hit is that injury as they were attended to it in the first half. Um, 4,000 student athletes, one attitude. We are the Big South, where winners are made. Big breath. Back here on ESPN Plus, Pirates offense comes back out onto the field, and at least for the, the beginning of the drive, Shea McKenzie not out on the field. Will Robinson, number 25, will be out there at running back. And he was effective for the Pirates in the, in the second ha uh, second quarter, running the ball a couple times up the middle. So, should the Pirates feel comfortable with him back there? And in plays like this are why Robinson able to break through two tackles, picking up blockers across the 40 to the 50, cuts to the 40, and the miss of the 20. A late flag comes out late, but Will Robinson ran about, what, 100 plus yards. <laughs> Pick it up about 80, <laughs> but we'll see where the ball is marked. I see a flag out. I see official without a hat. That normally means he threw a second flag unless he just lost his hat trying to run up the field. But a great individual effort. You have to credit that one, T.O., in the misdirection. Bell lined up at wide at running back. They sent Bell going to the right, and I think a lot of the defense went with him the way kind of game he's had. Robinson went back left and ate up all the empty field right in front of him. It was a great use of uh, misdirection by the Pirates of, of influencing them on what looked like a bubble screen. Um, and he, if you remember in the first half, he took one 85 yards. So, So they, they, with that big run he had in the first half, that that that, or that big catch and run, that's kind of influenced the defense. And he was able to crease it and make a great run and pick up, set up some great blocks down the field. That was an awesome job running. Um, and that's what you needed to see from that Pirates running game here in the second half. So now. the two penalties, there was one on each team and I guess they both offset. So the result of the play, It'll be first and 10 for the Pirates inside their own red zone. Which is quite interesting. Oh, and Bell is wide open touchdown. I'm sorry, uh, Barney. And then there is a late flag thrown as there was a breakdown in the coverage. As you said, Barney wide open in the end zone for the score. That's what those big plays can do for you. They, they fake the swing screen again and was able to have Barney up the seam wide open off the uh, the bad read, the false read by the, the offense. And um, this is the way you want to open up a half if you're, if you're any team, but the Pirates definitely want to open up the half like this. So the touchdown is good. Penalty charged against lane it will be enforced on the ensuing kick kickoff and that's just a bonehead play by the uh by the defender for uh lane college uh kevin 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 young gilmore um as he uh, goes up and gets a, a sportsman like kind of gets a, a penalty that's going to hurt his team after the touchdown was already made extra point up and good 27 to zero our score here from Armstrong Stadium. You're watching ESPN Plus coverage of college football. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Anything can happen on Saturday night. Back here on ESPN Plus presentation of college football. Matt White and the all MEAC safety. Travis T.O. Oliver here at Armstrong Stadium on the campus of Hampton University with the Pirates lead. The visiting Lane College Dragons, 27 to zero on a beautiful pitch and catch from Delman Williams. Barney and Lomax can't help but kick the ball out the back of the end zone after the unsportsmanlike penalty is enforced on the kickoff. The kick from the 50 yard line is out the back of the end zone and into the crowd. So unlike arena football, that is not a souvenir. You have to give it back to the, 
to the staff here at Hampton. So first and 10 for Lane. They'll start this drive on their own 25-yard line. And again, we saw some life out of this offense before the end of their last drive, T.O. Yeah, I think they need to get back to some of the misdirection they were doing. And, and even with the quarterback runs and movement things they did, to get Reynolds out on the edge and give them the option to run past options. Um, so if I'm Lane, I'm getting back to that, trying to wear this defense down and get them moving east-west as opposed to letting them just sit back and pin their ears. Reynolds in the shotgun, looks to his left, has a receiver along the sideline. Great tackle by number 11 from Hampton. You know who that is. That's Robert Scott. First time we've called his name today, but a young man in the secondary for Hampton that the, the Pirate fans are quite familiar with. Yeah, he's a, a heck of a football player, team captain, leader of this team, leader some, of this defense. Some might say he's kind of like a young Travis <laughs> Oliver, one might say. I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't go that far just yet. but Second down. Same play to the opposite side of the field and unable to catch the pass is Bunton for Lane to bring up third down and long. And these are some good play calls by uh, by Lane. Hampton's playing off on the outside, giving a good cushion. So they're just taking a quick five yard uh, hitches. Um, but if you're the receiver there, um, you got to come up with that catch if you're uh, bitten there or Bunton. Third down. Ball is spotted at the lane 30. Need to get to their own 35 yard line here for a first down. Center receiver in motion. It's a four receiver set. Reynolds looking to his right. He's going to scramble with it. He's got a defender to beat. And depending where the official says he stepped out of bounds, he's going to say he's got a first down. Great job staying uh, on the right side of that marker there on the far sideline there, T.O., by the quarterback. Oh, yeah, he tried to tiptoe the line and looks like the ref is actually going to mark him about three yards short. So he's ref is saying he stepped out and Lane's going to punt the ball away. That's a great job by this pirate defense. Yeah, I initially thought he was short, but when the official ran past the marker. But great job by the defense, as you said, forcing a fourth down opportunity. Let's see if the Pirates come after the punter again. They had some luck last week. And this could be a big quarter for the Pirates as Lane, um, the start the halves have not been very good, or uh, the start the second half not been very good. They've given up 28 points in the third quarter, and they've been unable to score in the third quarter. Bell will call for the fair catch, so the Pirates will start first and 10 at their own 29. When we come back from this break, you're watching ESPN Plus coverage of college football. We'll be back. Attitudes. This week, the love affair continues. And we're back here on ESPN Plus, presentation of college football. Matt White with T.O. Travis Oliver here at Armstrong Stadium. It's the Pirates lead Lane College 27-0. Pirates defense forced a punt. And what do you look to see on this Pirate offense here on this next drive here, Travis? I, I would look to see more of the same. If they come out here with this five receiver set, this diamond here to the near sideline, um, I'm thinking they're trying to see how Lane's going to adjust to it, but they got – Hell up top one on one. I would, wouldn't be surprised if he gets the ball. They go back to the bubble screen. Receiver picks up 10 plus yards. That's Barney along the line for his. Byron Barney, senior wide receiver out of Columbia, Maryland, a transfer from Sacred Heart. Moves the chains, as they say here at Hampton. That's a first down. And, and that play looks like it's going to set up some as they come out in the same set, but they put the diamond up up to the far side of the field. And we've got a flag here. And it's going to be a false start charge to the Pirates. Just as the Pirates start to gain some momentum, T.O., another penalty. Yeah, I would expect to see them, whatever they had called, I think they're going to stay with it because uh, I think they feel like they have some type of advantage here um, due to how uh, Lane has adjusted to the defensive front or to the offensive formation they've been getting. First and 15 now after the penalty. Williams in the shotgun. He's got five receivers, four bunch to his left. Bell one-on-one -on -one here on the near sideline. And another flag penalty looks to be a delay game against the Pirates. 
and a lot of these penalties penalties happen after a penalty or um, the kickoff. You only get 25 seconds, um, and a lot of time these offenses are going through these adjustments like they still have that 40 second play clock. Snap. Williams will keep it. He'll be brought down near the 40. Williams on the quarterback keeper. Well, that's an easy read for the quarterback when you look up um, and there's no Mike linebacker in the box um, to keep you honest to be able to help help with that run game. When you have five down, five offensive linemen versus all, four offensive linemen, the numbers are in your favor. So it, it tells you the quarterback to go ahead and pull, that th pull the ball down and run. Williams in the shotgun again with time. Has Bell. Bell unable to get away from that first defender. Pulled him down along the sideline. That was number five for the Dragons, Pitts. Good, strong tackle by Pitts. So, so far, Bill, Bell had been making a living off making the first defender miss. That time, Pitts able to step up to the challenge and corral the speedy wide receiver. And here the Pirates sitting there looking at third and long. Um, they've had some success on third down today and, and converting a few of these. So we'll see what the Pirates can do here. If they can keep the, 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 the drive alive. Williams under pressure. Pass is nearly intercepted. It was a low pass as it came out. He got hit just as he tried to throw it. It was, under, it was intended for Marcel, but Randall Johnson nearly come away with a big interception for Lane. And Lane dialed up the blitz there. Played a uh, man coverage behind him. Was able to get there before... Um, the routes had a chance to develop, and Delman forced a bad throw there and was fortunate enough that the defender would drop the ball instead of coming away with the interception. Yeah, Dragons brought everything but the kitchen sink on that one. Raha with the first punt for the Pirates today. He gets it a high punt. Goes out of bounds. Going to be marked near the 40-yard line. Not a good punt at all. It's actually going to give the Dragons pretty good field position as they look to try to get something going here here in the third quarter. Yeah, that's probably about the equivalent of what? A 15-yard punt? And that's what they needed for the first down. That's what the Pirates were kind of looking to get there. So, Not. If you're a lane fan, you're very happy with that uh, defensive stop and poor punt by Hampton. So first and 10 from their own 45 yard line. Reynolds dropping back under pressure, gonna roll away from the coverage. He's gonna throw it deep downfield. He's got a man completed inside the 20 yard line. Number 11 for Lane was able to get by the defender and that's Isaac, you talked about him early on. He makes his second big play of the day. And as Mark Jackson would say, mama there goes that man. Uh, making another play in the passing game. And he was one of the guys I told you we got, Hampton was going to have to look out for. Um, and he's able to make a big play uh, on the jump ball. And now, again, Lane's in and the red zone looking to get another score. Uh, Hampton was able to turn them back last time to see if they can do it again here. Lane goes from their own 45 to the Pirate 12. Reynolds will fake the handoff. He's going to keep it. Runs into the back of his own blocker and will come up short at the two-yard line. But I believe he's got enough for a first down. Or they're going to call it second and short. And if you recall last time, they went in the gun and it was a, a high snap from the center that drove him out of there. So I can promise you that's something they're going to be alert of um, if I'm Reynolds back there waiting on this snap. Second and one from the three-yard line. It's going to be handoff to Hill. Hill runs through the defenders and crosses the goal line for the touchdown. The Dragons have found pay dirt, taking advantage of the poor special teams play from Hampton. A big passing play got him down into the red zone, and from there was all the running attack of Reynolds and Hill punching it in from three yards out for the score. And Hill's a big fella, and he got downhill, and it looks like the Dragons might be thinking of going for two here. Yeah, they're going to – you almost have to at this point. 27-6. to six. Dragons going to look to get as many points as they can. They're scoring now on their second trip to the red zone, as you mentioned before, the last 
drive stalled because of a bad snap and a missed field goal opportunity. Reynolds in the shotgun. He's got four receivers. Hill in the backfield. Quick pitch, one-on-one -on -one to the left side, and another one-handed catch. And the official will say it is complete as Robert Scott was in coverage. Robert Scott begging Coach Prunty to throw the challenge flag as it was, it was clear he caught the ball, but he wasn't sure whether or not the receiver had control while still in bounds. But nonetheless, 27 to 8 to score, under seven minutes to go. As some people may say, that's good D, but better O. That was an amazing catch uh, by Amari Hampton there. Another great one handed catch um, by that young fella. And um, again, this is where in the, in the opening it felt like Hampton was vulnerable when the ball was in the air. Uh, they had a chance. These receivers from Lane College had a chance to make a play. And so now the officials are going to take a look at this, which I think is a good call because it was close. And you want to see if he kept control through the through making contact with the ground, if the ball touched the ground, and also if his feet were in bounds. You know, I don't pretend to be a rules expert, but it was hard to determine whether or not he completed the catch while still in bounds. So the officials will take a look at it well, in the replay booth here at Armstrong Stadium. Well, you have to remember the referee, the, the official in the booth isn't looking. He's looking for conclusive evidence. So right now it's ruled a catch, and they have to see enough evidence, conclusive evidence, to say that this play, this catch was not a catch. So if there's nothing there to tell them, even if it's close and they're not sure, they're going to rule on the side of the officials on the field. Right, and that's why the initial uh, ruling on the field is always crucial because, as you said, if there's not enough to overturn it either way, it will stand as called on the field. While we got this break, let's take a look at the uh, schedule for both teams. Next week, Hampton will be on the road. They'll be at Presbyterian. That game is set for a noon kickoff. And Lane will return home where they will take on Allen University. And I believe the ruling on the field has been confirmed. Or, no, excuse me. The wording they said was it stands. So typically when they say it's confirmed, that means they were sure on the call. When they say it stands, it's to your point. That it's conclusive enough evidence to overturn it. Yeah, they didn't see anything on it that said it's not a catch, so they have to go with the call. And either way, that's an excellent play by that young man, um, Amari Hampton. He's made a couple of um, great plays here for Lane. Pena with the nice long kick. It will be returned by Graham from the five. Across the 15 to the 20, he'll run into uh, waiting arms of some Dragon special team defenders there at the 30-yard line. So the Pirates, last drive ended in a punt. See if they can rebound here on the offensive side and answer this touchdown score by Lane. It'll be interesting to see what the Pirates come out to do. If you look, they came out in that diamond set, and they had success on the screen to Barney. Um, but penalties kind of pushed them into that second and 20, first and 20, those, those long down situations and really ruined the drive for the Pirates. Um, so hopefully um, the Pirates are thinking they're going to come out here and execute better and be able to sustain the drive as they've been able to do a uh, majority of the game barring that one drive. First and 10 for the Pirates from their own 30-yard line. Williams hand off to the tailback, and he will be gobbled up immediately the penetration from the lane defense swallowed up number 13 Eason he had nowhere to go yeah that was the ball that, that, that the quarterback should have pulled when they run those plays that quarterback's reading that defensive end and if he turns his shoulder to chase the running back quarterback should pull the ball and, and take it to the edge and um, he should have pulled that one he would have had at least five six yards before anyone was close to him on the run it's going to be a loss of about four yards on the play Williams pumps fakes will run up the middle of the field. He'll get the, back to the original line of scrimmage and more. He'll be tackled just shy of a first down. So Williams was looking to get to the flats there, T.O., had nowhere to go and elected to just, you know, tried and true all game long. The middle of the field has been wide open for the quarterback. Well, they've been doing a good job. That offensive line has been doing a good job of pushing the rushers out of their passing lanes, and that's what's been opening those creases up the middle for Delman Williams when he has to have, when he's had to have to take the ball and, and tuck it and run. So, 
um, good awareness of him, but seeing the defender there and taking away his initial read, but then being able to pull it down and make something happen with the ball. It's going to be third and short here. Robinson lined up at running back. Williams is going to keep it himself, and he's got room and more across the 50. 45 brought down in Dragons territory near the 38-yard line. Excuse me, the 42-yard line. Great run by the quarterback. First and 10 for Hampton, and it looks like the Pirates going back to the up-tempo, no-huddle offense. Williams going to take deep coverage, and it's a touchdown for Hampton as the pass is caught by Barney for his second score of the day. That was that was a courageous and great throw by <laughs> Delman Williams. There. And triple coverage, three DBs converge, and he put the ball where only Barney could get it. And Barney went and made a great catch going to the ground. Uh, awesome play there by that young man, Delman Williams and Brandon Barney for the score. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Byron Barney, I apologize, Byron Barney. Great play, young man. Great job. Extra point on the way here for the Pirates, looking to make this a 34 to 8 ball game here with five, just over five minutes left in the third quarter. Lomax awaits the snap. It's high, but it's down. The kick is up, and the extra point is good. What an amazing play for the Pirates. They go 70 yards from their own 30 all the way to the end zone, but the big play on that drive without question. Delman Williams with the no huddle just threw it into the end zone. His receiver Barney able to get past three DB, secures the catch, and the Pirates now lead 30, 48. Well, that's what happens when you can effectively run the ball. The play action game allows you to be able to hold those hold those safeties, hold those linebackers, and allow your, your talented receivers to get behind people. And, um, he made a great read. You can see him looking in down the middle to hold that middle of the field safety to create the space to fit that ball in the window. Yeah, they're going to officially mark that a 41-yard touchdown pass from Williams, who's had... Some struggles this year at the quarterback position. You know, the Pirates went to Northern Iowa, had some issues offensively. Charleston Southern here a week ago, I mentioned before, Williams actually benched that game in favor of Bruce Dixon. This week, Coach Prunty goes back to Delman Williams, and Delman is rewarding his coach with some strong play here today. And Delman uh, is, is the type of player I think that when he plays like this, he gives the Pirates the best chance to win. Um, he's just effective with throwing. He's been the most effective throwing the ball, and he's making good decisions with the football. Um, and at the quarterback position, that's what you want from your quarterback. Evelyn, again, nearly breaks one away. The Pirates like to play with fire. Fortunately, someone was able to pull him down by the back of his jersey. But going back to Williams, T.O., right now, 12 of 18, 247 yards and two touchdowns. And, and, and those two touchdowns have been big plays. One was a big, big catch and run by, uh, Bell. by Bell, and the other one was the big throw there. Uh, so, and then he had the great uh, the pass over in the corner to Barney um, as well. So he's been effective throwing the ball uh, today. I, Correction, I'm sorry, he has three touchdowns. Has, that's two, two, to Barney, two to Barney, one to Bell. Yeah, he had the one over in the far corner. So, excuse me, updated stats. 13 for 19, 288 yards, three touchdowns. And that's to go along with 103 yards rushing today. Yeah, right now he's definitely um, – he definitely came out here with a mission to, to end this streak as Trujillo uh, with a big run on the outside, on the left side of that Pirate defense, able to pick up about 15 yards here for this first down. Yeah, so almost 400 total yards of offense – from Delman Williams, 288 through the air. They're going to say 103 on the ground. What an impressive display here for the senior quarterback from right across the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel in nearby Norfolk, Virginia. It's going to be first down, first and 10. Dragons have the ball back into Pirate territory. Reynolds under pressure. He's going to tuck it and run, throwing on the run. He's got a man wide open. And I believe the pressure got to the receiver that time. That was Amari Hampton. 
And uh, I think that might have just been too easy of a catch for him. He's been making these tough one-handed catches. and He was, was wide just... open along the sideline. I think he was more concerned to make sure he was staying in bounds. And he looked down at his feet and then looked up and the ball was right there. When you see him run around and you watch it on replay, he came out of his break and it looked like he slipped a little bit. And he was trying to get back. I don't think he thought the ball was coming after he looked down at the ground and uh, the ball was right on him really quickly. Brings up second down. Pirates look like they're bringing pressure. And it will be a handoff to True. He's going to cross the 40, pick up about four or five yards on that carry as we near the four-minute mark here in the third quarter. And this is where they had success, um, Lane College had to uh, end the second half, that last drive with Trujillo getting that ball and getting to the outside of the Pirates defense and able to get on the edge. Um, up the middle, they haven't had as much success running the ball. So maybe here you'll see them going with more of that. Again, trying to get to the edges, get the defense running east and west, um, and maybe then coming back with some play action, trying to hit them up, hit them down the field. Third and five, Pirates chasing after Reynolds. Reynolds going to have to run with it. He breaks through an arm tackle, dives at the first down marker. I believe he has it. And they will give him the first down. So a great individual effort there by the quarterback. Under heavy pressure, able to keep his balance and pick up a first down with his legs. And they're going to try to pick up the tempo a little bit here. Um, but with the subs, they got to wait and try to catch the Pirates off balance. But we're going to have a timeout here. Timeout called by Hampton. First timeout called by the Pirates. It's a 30-second timeout. So our score here, 34 to 8. What are some of the adjustments you've seen by both teams here in the second half so far, T.O.? Well, I've seen the Pirates look like they've gone back to committing and just passing the ball. Um, they had a couple of runs with Delman Williams trying to get up the uh, – when he's taking it out of the passing game, not necessarily design runs. Um, but then he did have a couple of design runs where he was able to pull in and pick up some big chunks of yard. I just think they, the Pirates finally realized, like, hey, we can get behind these guys. We can throw the ball. Um, let's go back to doing that. And they've been effective when they have been able to just sit and throw the ball. On the other side for Lane, um, again, they are getting back on this drive to what they did in the first, the end of the first half, running the ball to the edge and getting the ball outside to, uh, to their receivers where they feel like they have the advantage. Coming out of the timeouts, first and 10 for the Dragons. They've got the ball at the Pirate 35-yard line. Reynolds in the shotgun. Looks to his left, has plenty of time, throws to the end zone. Pirates back in coverage, and it's intercepted. Oh, oh no, they're going to say it hit the ground. It was a great individual effort there, I think, by Carr. It looked like he was able to get under the football on the deflection, but the official was right there and says it hit the ground. That was great coverage by Carr. He was able to put the receiver on his back so that he, had, he was the only person with a good chance at the ball. And, as he was trying to reel it in, it did look like it bounced off the ground. Um, great, great job by the defender. But again, uh, Reynolds having faith in his guys, um, trying to give them a chance as he went for Isaac there in the back of the end zone. Yeah, it looked like that ball at the last second hit the ground and bounced back into his hands. Dragons get this playoff just in time. Reynolds running away from the defense, finally brought down. Reynolds on the quarterback keeper going to be a loss of several yards there for the Dragons as Reynolds I'm not sure if there was a miscommunication between him and the tailback but he's going to lose about five or six yards he's going to bring up third and long here as we reach the two two and a half minute mark here in this third quarter well they tried to run a play that the Pirates have had some success on versus them where they faked the jet sweep and the quarterback darts up the middle as the defense is running to the sideline. But the Pirates sniffed it out and was able to clog up the middle. He had nowhere to go with that football. Reynolds dropping back, looking down the field. He's going to launch it over the middle. He's got a man, makes the first defender miss, got a first down. Big completion, keeps the drive alive here for Lane. That's Ahmad Isaac again. We have a couple of lane players down on the field. Um, looks like during that pass protection when the quarterback began to scramble, they may have made contact with one another and um, as the offensive lineman is down there on the field. Yeah, two of the linemen from lane are down on the field and they are not 
two pleas. They're concerned about their teammate. And again, Ahmad Isaac on another big catch on third down. Um, Reynolds able to find him in open space um, and get him the football for an uh, easy catch for a first down there. But it looked like during the pass protection, um, Hill may have, um, the running back Hill may have hit the lineman low as they scrambled about as he was trying to give the quarterback a little bit more time. Yep. Yeah, they're going to bring out some more medical staff to take a look at the injured player. So we're going to take a quick break here while they attend to the injured player. Uh, you're watching ESPN Plus coverage of college football. We'll be back. We get back to action here on the field. It's a, I believe it was a false start charged against Lane. So that'll back them up an additional five yards. They'll have first and 15 from the Hampton 26 yard line. Just 96 seconds left here in the third quarter. Reynolds in the shotgun. It's going to look to his left. It's a bubble screen. He's got a man. Hampton, I believe, is going to make a couple people miss before he's brought down the receiver actually was bunting excuse me it was 82 picks up a good chunk of yards there moves the ball back inside the red zone down to the pirate 15 yard line and and um lane has um had some success the last time they were down here came away with a touchdown on the on a couple of runs the big run by reynolds and then the short yard run by hill so expect to see um something similar to that down here as they know they can have success with the quarterback runs. It's going to be second and five after the 10-yard pass and should have been a block in the back penalty. Uh, pass is incomplete. Look like the offensive lineman was getting away with a little extracurricular activity, but no call. It brings up a third down. And, and good job of Reynolds getting out of the pocket, but that is a tough throw across your body as you push to the right as we have a little precipitation start now to fall down on the field. I'm a little night missed, and that can change the, the name of the game, and that's why you want to have be able to establish that running game. So we'll see how effective the passing game here as the water begins to fall here in the Tidewater area of Virginia. 43 seconds and counting here. It's going to be another run play and nowhere to go for the ball carrier. Trail maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. And Sproul was waiting there for him with open arms as he took the hand off from Reynolds. So a big fourth down here. See if Lane will just let the quarter come to an end and use the change in quarter as a unofficial timeout. Unless we've got 13 seconds. Play clock's not even running. If you're laying, I think you take the quarter here. You make sure you got the right call on here in this fourth down situation so that you don't you don't waste the play here. And that will be the end of the third quarter. It'll be an important play coming up for the Dragons. Fourth and five from the Pirate 15 yard line. When we come back, you're watching ESPN Plus coverage of college football. We'll be right back.
here after a turnover on down for the uh, Lane College Hampton University to take over here on the 15-yard uh, line. First and 10, handoff. Will Robinson breaks a one tackle, runs through another before he finally comes down, but he's got another first down for the Pirates here. As we enter this fourth quarter, Travis Oliver, you expect Hampton to really go back to that running game to try and just work the clock here, leading 34 to eight. Well, you're Pirates, you're hoping to get a couple things out of running the football. You're hoping to A, to work the clock, but B, maybe get some rhythm in the running game, find some effective play calls and runs that you can execute well, um, and be effective running the ball in. And you look here in the second half, Will Robinson has been really good with running the football for the Pirates. So maybe they've gotten him going. They have some momentum carrying forward for the rest of the season. Another run up the middle. It's Robinson again. He'll cross the 35-yard line before he's brought down just shy of another first down. Great to see the young freshman getting some carries here. Will Robinson, the, excuse me, the Richard sophomore out of Smithfield High School. Very talented young man. Did a lot of damage at Smithfield High School. Looks to pick up where he left off here in college. During my playing days here, I played with a, uh, a young man out of uh, Smithfield. They've been known to produce some pretty good talent out, out of Smithfield, Chris Parker. And he kind of puts me in that mindset of, of Chris Parker, who was a a uh, very uh, speedy, athletic guy. Uh, Chris, of course, wasn't a running back, was a receiver, but uh, when he got the ball in the space, he could make some things happen. And uh, Smithfield's been known to put out some talent here in this 757 area. Dexter Collins right there wraps up the running back, forcing third down and coming in to replace Robinson for Hampton. His number, uh, that's 43, Harriet. Hampton has started. If you look at, you can look on the sideline, you see a lot of their starters now are starting to come out and they're starting to get some of their reserves into the game and getting them some quality reps here late in this ball game. Yeah, in this kind of scenario, uh, Travis, as a former coach, what do, you, what do you hope to see out of some of the uh, younger guys or some of the guys further down the depth chart who are coming in? Well, you just want to see the on this big catch. And Two defenders ran into each other as that was Johnson, the sophomore out of Charlotte, made a nice catch and picked up big yards after after the catch into Dragon territory at the 41 yard line. Well, if you're a coach, that's what you want to see. You want to see a young talent like Aiden Johnson there and just execute the plays and make the plays they're supposed to make. Great catch on the drag route and good run after catch. Um, just looking to see those guys get out there and be able to execute the basic play calls and get them that those reps, those game time reps, those live reps, so that when their moment comes or they have to step in the ball game, they're prepared for the moment. Williams again will keep it on the ground. He'll cross the 30, go out of bounds near the 25 yard line. Williams continues to add to his impressive totals. Now, if I'm, I'm Coach Prunty, now I am talking to my offensive staff, and I'm, hey, when are we thinking about we're getting um, Delman out of here? You don't want anything uh, unfortunate to happen while he's out there running the football or out there playing. So uh, we're starting to think about getting someone else out on the field. And we got a flags here on this play. See which way the officials are going to call this. They're having a conversation, so may mean it's not holding. Unofficially right now, Williams, 312 yards passing, 115 yards on the ground, so an impressive offensive output by the quarterback. Looks like the penalty. They offset, they called a... Um uh, uh, roughing the passer on 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 Lane College, so then they called the penalty on Hampton. So those penalties are all set, and we're just going to replay the down. We get a do-over. Clock stops at 11:23. 
that goes back to what I was just saying about with, with Delvin, and taking a hit like that on rough in the past, you don't want to get him hurt and you lose your, your signal caller for a significant amount of time. So if I'm Hampton, I'm looking at um, getting some of my backup QBs into the game and getting them some. some Harriet breath. makes some defenders miss, runs into his own blocker. He'll be brought down near the first down. And the officials will say he's got it. Be first and 10 from the 15 yard line. The so Pirates again look to add to what is a 34 to 8 lead over Lane. Pirates into the red zone here. You love to get one more score to kind of really just put the icing on the cake for what's been a pretty good offensive day here for the Pirate offense. Uh, my biggest takeaway right now is the penalties. You got to find a way to minimize those and. Um, which they have been pretty good most of the year. You minimize those penalties and keep yourself in situations, um, good situations like they've been in all day. Another handoff to Harriet. He'll be brought down around the 11 yard line, pick up of about three, four yards. Clock continues to tick away here. As you say, 34 to eight, Pirates wanna add one more score to really cement this one as they will be on the road next week in South Carolina, taking on a future conference foe in Presbyterian. Game is set for a noon kickoff. Next week, the Dragons will be back home, and they'll be taking on Allen University. Their game is set for a 2 p.m. kickoff. Pirates in no rush here. 16 seconds on the play clock. Williams this time. We'll have four receivers, three bunch at the top of the formation, one single receiver at the bottom. Harriet still in at running back, and he will get the carry. He'll cross the 10-yard line before he's finally forced down. They'll give him his forward progress to about the nine, and Will Robinson will come back in for Hampton. That's the, the great thing about having that depth and getting those young guys out there. Uh, Harriet's getting some very meaningful carries to him. Um, and then on the flip side of it, you gain confidence in those guys as a coach of putting them in in more crucial situations. Third down, some movement up front. Pirates look for the audible. Ten seconds on the play clock as we reach the nine-minute mark here in the fourth quarter. Pirates got a few seconds to get this off, and they do. Williams looking to his right. He's going to throw it to the corner of the end zone, and the pass – is complete and another touchdown for Hampton Antonio Graham this time with the reception and the Pirates tack another six on the board 40 to 8 to score now here at Armstrong Stadium with the extra point on the way from Lomax yeah the the Portsmouth uh, native was able to run that fade from the slot um, and and Delman Williams threw a great pass to the outside shoulder of the, of the receiver the defensive back tried to turn and find the ball, just wasn't able, wasn't capable of finding it. Great throw and catch by that those two, and way to uh, kind of for Delman Williams, way to put the the cherry on top of what's been an, an outstanding day offensively for him. Got a flag on the play. Couldn't hear the official, but I believe it was charged against Lane. Right now, Williams, fifteen of twenty-one. 321 yards, four touchdowns, all through the air, on the ground, 11 attempts, 115 yards. Very impressive day for the senior quarterback out of Norfolk. And and if you're the Pirates and if you're this offense, that's what you're, you're looking for and you're hoping now you have that momentum of, of uh, how effectively he's played and he's run this offense that that's going to carry forward. So when you go down to Presbyterian, you're in position to um, come away with another big win and now get your own, get another streak going. This time, get that winning streak going. I'm not sure what the delay is here, but the officials talking to both teams down there in the trenches, if you will. 848 remaining on the game clock. Lomax, extra point. Kick is up. And the kick is good. 41 to 8 is our score from Armstrong Stadium. We're going to take a quick break. You're watching ESPN Plus presentation of college football. We'll be right back. Lowe's start with Lowe's. 
for dedicated services and associates to get you in, out, and back to business. Save 5% every day. And welcome back to Armstrong Stadium, this ESPN Plus broadcast of University of Lane College Dragons here in the, with 848 to go in the fourth quarter. Hampton set the kickoff. Um, our score now is Hampton 41, Lane College 8. Deep to receive this kick. We have Anthony Evelyn, who's been pretty effective um, for the Dragons returning the kick, so Pirates might do well to kick away from him. Here we go. We have an end over end kick that's going to land right into the blue of the pirate end zone. And here's Evelyn up the middle. Ah, and a shoestring tackle here by number 88, Marcel Paul, with a touchdown saving tackle. Big tackle there stops what could have been another touchdown for the Dragons. 8.40 remaining here in the ballgame. First and 10 for the Dragons, who have had some success through the air. However, a series of unfortunate events always has been the issue when they get down into the red zone. Hand off to the tailback up the middle. He'll be tackled after a gain of three. Tackle made by the Pirates, number 53. That was Jones here on the carry. Pickup of about two or three. Well, they'll credit him with four so bring second down and six ball now on the Dragons 34 yard line clock down to 8 13 and counting here snap Reynolds looks to the left was supposed to be a bubble screen fortunate for the Dragons not intercepted as Pirates number 37 Zion Edmonds read the bubble screen the whole way actually hit him right in the chest he wasn't expecting the pass and could have come away with an easy interception an opportunity at a pick six if he catches it clean bring up third and long clock stops now at 806 ball is on the 34 yard line of lane they've got to get to their own 40 to extend this drive and those are the plays you, you, you hope to come up with because I know those big fellas you love to get to see getting the end zone to see the big guys do their end zone celebration. So. Snap to Reynolds under pressure looking to his left has a man in one on one angling two thrown Zion Emmons again was there in coverage the I think the receiver did a good job of selling the call. Well, in that situation, what the referee is looking at is the receiver, is the defensive back looking back to try to make a play on the ball. And when the receiver tried to come underneath him, um, the, receive, the defensive back restricted him, but he never turned his head to play the football. So that's an easy call for the official. Um, I don't think Reynolds really wanted the ball to go to the inside. He wanted it on that outside shoulder. Uh, but it set it up for a play that the receiver can only make a play on the ball and puts the DB in a bad position. First and 10 after the 15-yard penalty. Ball now at the 49-yard line of Lane. Clock down to 7.45. Three, four, three receiver formation. Reynolds looking downfield, under pressure, going to roll to his left. He's got Hampton. Pass is intercepted. They went after him once, not twice, but on the third time. Zion Edmonds comes away with the interception. The first time, Zion wasn't looking for the ball. The second time, he got called for the pass interference. And the third time, he comes away with an interception. Great job by the secondary for the Pirates forcing that turnover. Well, Zion did a great job of really baiting the, deep, the quarterback into throwing that. He was in the hip of the receiver. Um, and he just kind of stayed there until he saw the ball in the air and undercut it. Um, that was a great job by the defensive back and a bad decision by the quarterback. That play there, you either take, tuck it and run or in, the, in his situation, just find somebody in the stands, give them a souvenir, play the next down. Pirates will come out on the off uh, with a new quarterback, number 14, Brendan Green. Haven't seen Brendan since the first game of the year for the Pirates. He was the opening day starter and he was eventually pulled in favor of Williams. So as you said before, T.O., an opportunity now for the Pirates and Coach Prunty's staff 
to get some other players on the field and get some much needed reps. Yeah, with with Delman being a senior, uh, this is a good time. If, if you're thinking Brand, Brendan's going to be your quarterback of the future, uh, you definitely want to get him some reps so he can uh, get some more game experience and hopefully in preparation moving forward and building for the future. Yeah, Brendan Green, six foot one redshirt sophomore from Columbia, South Carolina. As you say, potentially the quarterback of the future for Coach Robert Prunty and his Pirates. Handoff in the last play to Harriet was a three-yard pickup. Second down, back to the back. He'll pick up another four yards on that carry. It'll be about third and two here for Hampton as they continue to work clock here as we're under seven minutes remaining in the ballgame. Well, I, I'll say this coming into this game. I was expecting to see a... Uh, a better performance. I was hoping to get to see Brace uh, McKenzie, get to see him out there and uh, doing, making some plays. And the Pirates have really found a way to neutralize him and not let him be effective. Um, Dexter Collins was another young man, the defense nose guard number 95. Um, I expected to have a good performance. And he made some plays um, out there for this um, Dragon defense. But um, the Pirates, again, have found a way Green. to neutralize. We'll throw it up. And we've got flags thrown. Green was under duress when he threw that up in one-on-one -on -one coverage. The intended receiver was number 89, Ray. And, and what we saw from Green is kind of what happened to him that the opening game of the season uh, when we watched him. Um, he took the snap, but he bobbled it and put it on the ground, and he kind of just never really got the rhythm of that play. Yeah, so on fourth and short, Pirates had to go to the deep air attack and complete. The penalty is declined. They called a Pirate offensive lineman and legal receiver downfield. So as a result of the play, it will be fourth down. And the Pirates will be punting, I believe, for their second time of the contest. 6.08 remaining. So, and, Aurora and, uh, set to punt. And going back to what you were saying with the illegal man down the field, what happens here is in today's offense, you have what we call RPO, run pass options. Play game, offense. You have your run pass options where the ball is designed to be out quick. So the offensive linemen are run blocking because you may run the ball, but the ball is coming out so quick that it's not a flag if they're two, three, four yards down the field. But when he bobbled the snap, it messed up it, the timing. It messed up the timing, and then he threw the ball deep, and that's why they called the a flag. So a lot of times they get mad at the offensive linemen because they're down the field, but that's really on the quarterback on that play. Delayed game on the punter here. I believe that was on purpose to give Aurora an extra five-yard cushion here, and it will force the fair catch <laughs> by Lane. So the Dragons will come right back out onto the field here. With six minutes left in the ball game, it's a 41 to eight score. And some scores around the country. I got one for you, T.O., the big upset. Texas upsets Oklahoma in that Red River rivalry. And a lot of people now wonder if the Big 12 can get somebody, can get a team into the college football playoff. Well, I think they had the team with Oklahoma with uh, Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray is an exciting football player. Um, and I think that's the team that's a conference they probably thought would be the team to beat. Um, Tom Herman's an excellent ball coach. He's done a great job. He did a great job at Houston. And now Don't forget his first stop when he was the offensive <laughs> coordinator at The Ohio State University. But back to action here. <laughs> Handoff to Troy. He's going to break a couple tackles. He's still going. Breaks another tackle. Big pick up on the ground out near the 30-yard line. But go ahead and finish about Tom Herman. <laughs> No, he's an excellent ball coach, and, and they, they got a steal with getting him in there um, at Texas. He's really um, doing a good job of changing the culture down there. So not surprised that that was a game, you know. And he was a Texas grad assistant, so he's familiar with the landscape down there in that Red River shootout. So not surprised he was able to kind of come in there and, and infuse some life into that, that Longhorn uh, football program. So this is a big win. It can carry them forward going into the future. Another big run for Lane. Number, I believe that was 16 on the carry. That's first down for the Dragons. Might have been Whitaker. Oh, no. It is 16. That was Whitaker in on the carry. 
now you can see even with uh, Lane starting to work some people out, some of their uh, younger players in, the running backs in, and um, getting them some playing time, which is you hate to see games like this that, that one a lopsided win or a lopsided um, score. Uh, but for those players who might not get an opportunity or those young players who are waiting their time, you know, they get a chance to get out here and get some quality reps and, and, and get their feet wet a little bit. Another carry on the ground for the Dragons stopped by the linebacker. That's Jason Davidson. He makes a stop. It's going to bring up second and about six. Clock continues to tick away here. 420 and counting here at Armstrong Stadium. Again next week, the Hampton Pirates will be in South Carolina taking on Presbyterian. That game is set for a noon kickoff. And Lane College will be back home, and they'll be taking on their opponent at 2 p.m. at home, which is Allen University. And just talking about the Big South and Hampton's next opponent, uh, Presbyterian, um, they played Kennesaw State, State today and lost to Hughes on 56-0. to So and Kennesaw State is the defending champions and were the preseason pick to repeat. So very tough team. So the Pirates again next week will be taking on a future conference foe in Presbyterian. Pirates played three teams in the Big South that they'll be seeing in the future. Monmouth last week in Charleston Southern and the previously mentioned Presbyterian. So the Pirates looking to get one of those three games during their independent uh, season here in the FCS. Strong run there on the ground again. Looked like that was Whitaker. Ryan Whitaker again. He's showing some flashes back there in the backfield. Um, they list him as a wide receiver. Uh, kind of remind you of uh, of Cobb from when they ran to Cobb with Green Bay when they put him in the backfield, a guy who could do multiple things and, and is a threat with the ball in his hand. Quick pitch to the flat. That's Hampton working. Great move. What strong footwork. It picks, uh, creates the opportunity for the first down, and he takes it. Another score from the Big South while we're on it. Uh, Wagner um, and Campbell play with Campbell – winning by a huge margin, 49 to uh, three over Wagner. So another, again, future conference opponent in Campbell uh, with a big win um, in the conference. Two and a half minutes remain here. Lane continues to drive. They're going deeper into Pirate territory. Whitaker tried to avoid the defender, but the Pirate defensive line wrapped him up quickly. It's gonna be a loss of maybe a yard. Pirate defense. Um, I know they would love right now. Coach Prunty would love to get a stop here, get out the field, and go ahead and get in the victory victory formation to go ahead and end this game. Two minutes and counting here. Second down and long. Reynolds in the shotgun, looking to his right, under pressure, force to his left, rolling, back thrown here. Down, Mark. For number eighty-two, that's. Uh, Bunton. It's going to be a hold charge against the Dragons. Holding against. And that will bring them back 10 yards with 143 remaining here in this fourth quarter. Well, that happens from time to time when you get quarterbacks there, those mobile quarterbacks that can move about. Going to be a 10-yard penalty, still second down. Ball will be backed up to the 48-yard line. Send a man, send Whitaker in motion, and the DB read it perfectly. Hit him right as he caught the football. That's Edmonds again making a big play. Wow. I think Edmonds is making the case to make sure he gets plenty of snaps moving forward here on the field. If Edmonds had gotten there any sooner, T.L., that would have been a touchdown going the other way. Yes, he read that perfectly. And, and it was and it, it was a play that, that if, if Whitaker gets that ball in space, he's shown that he can make some things happen. So that was a great read, great anticipation by Edmonds. Um, and big hit. 
We got one minute to play here in the ball game. Reynolds, under pressure. He's going to step up, but he's going to be corralled by the defense, and the sack will be credited to big number 95, Rouse. You said the Pirates wanted to get the stop, and right there, Rouse wraps up the quarterback, and I think you need an abacus or a graphing calculator to determine what this down and distance is. This is fourth and... <laughs> I think they got to get on the Five, bus and go back 10, to Jackson. 15, 20, <laughs> 25, 30. I'm in the fourth and 30 ballpark. Yeah, that's a long way to go. And, and here, I probably would expect to see some type of Hail Mary just throw it up toward the end zone with the clock ticking down just about 10 seconds to There's go. 10 the seconds game. left in the ball game. Reynolds under pressure. He's going to run with it. Six seconds. Five. And Reynolds will just go out of bounds. And we got an unnecessary flag as the Pirates. It was an unnecessary roughness call against Jeff Dotson. At this point in this junction of the game, I do not understand why you would even want to risk that because what that's going to do is give, <laughs> they're going to give Lane an automatic first down and the game cannot end on a defensive penalty. So Lane will get one more untimed down and as a redshirt sophomore, Jeff Dawson's got to understand the impact of that mistake. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if the referees even look back at the clock because I think he went out before the time expired. So they may put some time back on the clock. But again, like you said, you have to be smart at it. Let the quarterback run out of bounds. He's well short of the first down. Bonehead play. Well, they called an unnecessary roughness against Reynolds, who I would argue had a reason to be upset. He got hit, got a bounce for no reason. But because the penalty's offset, that is the end of the ball game. So our final score, 41 to 8. And I don't even think it's a question here, T.O. Delman Williams, player of the game. Over 400 total yards, 300 plus through the air, 100 on the ground. Leads his team to the 41-8 victory. Definitely player of the game. He definitely showed why he was the starter and um, looked like he's made some growth from over the past few weeks. And maybe getting benched the week before um, has sparked something in him that's going to allow him to carry these powers forward the rest of this year and uh, finish on some winning notes. All right, well, with that, for Travis Oliver, our crew here at Armstrong Stadium, we thank you for joining us here on ESPN+. Plus. I'm Matt White signing off. We'll see you next time right here from Armstrong Stadium.